What's good, YouTube? Quinn Wade, basketball analysis coming to y'all on the analysis playground. We're gonna talk about the Bucks beating the Minnesota Timberwolves 115 102. They beat another great team, record wise and team wise, to improve to 8 0. This team is still the only unbeaten team in the entire NBA. I had a chance to check them out versus the Pistons. Now I'm about to go to the Cavaliers game because. And I want to go to the Hawks game on Monday, but I definitely going to try to get to that Cavaliers game um, on Wednesday to see can they beat another great team just because they just been so formidable and so amazing as a team watching this team. Drew Holiday, a monster game for him, 29 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists, 12 of 24 from the field, 50% from the field. Also shot 4 of 11 from 3, continues his 40% clip from 3 streak. Um, that, that's been amazing for him. Not ever been a great three point shooter in his entire career. Been shooting that thing a whole lot better this season, over 40% for the year or two, which is amazing. One of one for free throw line. He had two steals, no blocks. This game, this is a ferocious descent, the defender. I like the way he steals. I like the way he hangs on people. I like the way he gets up in them. Even now with his length, he crowds him without being in a blocking formation by using his feet to stay lateral and then cuts them off and forces them to pass or give up the ball early or force them into a shot clock violation because the ball got to move around or they got to take a tough shot. There's an excellent defender. He's my pick for defensive player of the year and an all-star this year. And a lot of it has to do with Chris Middleton being out. He has to do more playmaking. He has to have the ball in his hands more. He has to do more scoring because the starting lineup needs it. And he's been able to do it throughout his career, and he still can do it now. That's a beautiful blessing to have a player at his age be healthy, be ready to go, be locked and loaded, and just be playing so hard. And so, so, just so energized that it's just fun watching Drew Holiday play. He's been one of my most undervalued players in the NBA, but the Bucks just utilize him the right way each and every night. And they just the right system, the right culture, the right team to have him up under that tutelage of my booting hoser is just a beautiful thing to watch i love watching this bucks team they're fun they're exciting they're flashy and they, they just literally got that pop that other teams just don't have and it's just something that's tough to see teams just struggle to score struggle to get a good run consistently going at the bucks the bucks always find out a way to slow down their opponent they found find a way to make them rethink their game plan and teams usually have to change it up so much that they lose themselves within their offense or their defensive schemes while the bucks stay true to who they are and what their identity is and since they got the three-point shooting going down now they're going to be unstoppable unstoppable offensively and they're already hard to score on defensively because of brooke Giannis and drew holiday and Brooke Lopez, seven points, eight rebounds, no assists, two of six from the field, two of four from three, one of two from the free throw line, one block. Also, Giannis, 26 points, 13 rebounds, 11 assists, a triple double, triple DZ for Giannis, Gallup and Kumpo, Gallup to the rim, Gallup with the blocks, Gallup with the assists, just probing the defense, finding shooters, finding guys that's dumping off or cutting to the basket, just dunking it himself, getting layups, just causing a lot of chaos and a lot of just problems defensively for teams, just being an interior force, reminding you why Shaq was so good in Orlando and getting them to the finals. Giannis can do everything Shaq can do. It's just he's just more quicker and more leaner and just more better handle-wise. And he perfecting his game and perfecting his interior scoring to the point where he's just unstoppable. And he's been like that for multiple years at this point. He also shot 204 from the three-point line. That's 50% from three, which is outstanding for Giannis. 50% for the free throw line, a little bit of a downgrade. He's been shooting better than that lately. Um, not a good sign for him, but he did get there 20 times. That puts the defense in tough situations. Get guys out the game quicker. Make them play worse lineups. Make them play worse players. And that helps the Bucks. and they really helped them during this game for the most part in the second half. Um, you also look at Grayson Allen, 10 points, 5 rebounds two assists two of um three from the three-point line three of five from the field he also was two of two from the free throw line two steals some quick crafty steals when people was 
penetrating to the lane, just reaching in and getting all ball and forcing turnovers that way. Also, it's good to see him get double figures. You want to see that. Javon Carter didn't have the game that he wanted, but six points, one rebound, two assists, two or two, I mean, two or three from the uh, field, two or three from the three point line. Also got one block, one steal. This is a solid defender. One steal was crucial to me because it stopped it. It stopped the Minnesota um, momentum, um, just forcing them to take the ball out and get the ball in somebody else's hands. It comes up to key possession, especially when they're trying to make a run, um, gets the energy. Bobby Portis, another um, bench performer, licking his tongue, having fun out there, hit a big three that kept them in double figures throughout the entire game, always made the right shot, whether it was inside or outside or hitting a post shot or just getting a layup or a putback. Good game for Bobby Portis, 18 points, eight rebounds, five assists. Also, 7 for 14, 50% from the field, 2 of 6 from 3, 2 of 2 from the free throw line, and only had one turnovers, no blocks, no steals. And then Marjan did an excellent job finishing in the paint, getting and ones, getting dunks, playing in transition, cherry picking a little bit out there, just getting high confidence moves and just getting his flow and his fluidity with the team um, asserted into the starting lineup eventually to me over uh, Javon Carter in the future, maybe not this season because Chris Middleton is going to come back and Grayson Allen is going to be the starting two. But in the future, seeing a guy that can hit the mid-range, hit the three, and can cut to the basket, catch lives, catch alley-oops, and can finish with two hands or one hand, just an athletic freak and has the ability to grow a little bit because he's not 21 yet, I believe. Um, just helps, you know, the, the Bucks defense and offense in the future. You can see him being special for them two to three years down the road if they can keep him under a good contract and he has a good upside is basically what I'm saying. George Hill, two points, um, one assist, one of three from the field, oh, one from the three point line, one steal. Uh, Jordan, zero points, one rebound, one assist, oh, two, oh, one from three, um, oh, two from the field. Wesley Matthews, three points, one rebound, one assist, one of uh, one from the field, one of one from three. One still didn't have to do much. Him and Wesley Matthews and Jordan they had to do much because Marjan was the bright spot off the bench along with Bobby Portis and Javon Carter started. Car Anthony Towns, 22, 11, and 5. Anthony Edwards, 24, 3, and 3. Rudy Gobert, 7, 13 rebounds. D'Angelo Russell, 9, 3, and 4. Uh, McDaniels, 9, 2, and 1. Nasri, 8, and 5 rebounds. Kyle Anderson, 4, 3, and 3. Jordan. I mean, Noel, uh, 13, 3 and 3. Torrey and Prince, 6 1, rebound, 2 of 6, 0 of 2, 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Um, he also had one three point shot. And that was pretty much it for the bench. Um, um, McLaughlin had three rebounds, three assists, 0 of 2 from the field, and three. And that was about it. The, the Towns and them didn't perform well. Um, to me, as a complete team, they looked like a mess. Didn't pass the ball well. Didn't execute well from the field. Didn't really know what they wanted to do on the defensive end. They didn't know they wanted to crowd the paint. They didn't know if they wanted to, to stop the, the penetration. They didn't know how they wanted to guard the three-point line. Guys was seemed like they was confused of what they were supposed to be doing out there in the paint and outside of the paint. Anthony Edwards had a good shooting game from the field. Not so much from three. Not terrible, though. Towns did the same. Wasn't terrible. Just wasn't the dominant force that he needed to be. A lot of it had to do with Towns being in foul trouble. Six fouls ended up fouling out the game. They need him to be more assertive on the offensive end and be more of a dominant force from here on out if they want to have a great record and finish top six, which will be an improvement than being top seven in the playoffs like they was last year. They want to be completely out the playing tournament. They have the talent. They have no reason to be in the playing tournament this year after the Gobert Go trade. Then you look at the fact that Anthony Edwards didn't pass the ball that well, considering that D'Angelo Russell and McDaniels didn't either. They need somebody to be that hybrid playmaker. If it's not going to be Towns and Gobert, it has to be Russell Edwards. You know McDaniel's not going to do it. Somebody has to score and play, make, and facilitate at the same time. We know that Towns and Gobert are great screen setters. Towns is more of a pick-and-pop guy. 
Um, Rudy Gobert is more of a pick and roll guy. They need somebody to be able to facilitate, find those guys on lobs, find those guys on pop situations, and also be able to put pressure on the defense. Anthony Edwards can do it. I still think they need another point guard to be able to run that offense a little bit better. I know Tyus Jones can do it, but he's no longer on this roster. It's going to be interesting to see how they figure that part out. As D'Angelo Russell should be able to do it, just haven't been able to do it at all in Minnesota. He was 3 of 15 tonight from the field. Two of eight from the three-point line, just couldn't make a shot. He has those nights frequently. He's definitely not the point guard of the future. I know him and Towns are best friends, but this is a business relationship. This is a, a career relationship, and ultimately Towns wants to win. So does D'Angelo Russell. This partnership just isn't working the way that they hope that it works. It makes sense to want to play with your friends. It makes sense to want to play with somebody that you're close to, but it's also – determined on wins that's why Andrew Wiggins got traded because he wanted to win and he couldn't win in Minnesota he was able to do it in Golden State it might be a thing for D'Angelo Rosa if he can't improve the shooting can't improve the shooting and playmaking then what do we really need you to be our point guard for if you can't shoot to three you can't shoot to me or you can't make a floater and you can't facilitate either then why are we paying you 80 million dollars for what that's going to be the question for D'Angelo Russell and free agency Ta Edwards is the same I, I don't really get defensively he hasn't got where he needed to be passing and facilitating hasn't improved his iq on that end of the court he is athletic he's going to get to the rim he's going to get his points he just has the confidence and the bravado to do it it's just about continually doing it efficient like he did tonight but the three-point shot still has to improve drastically um gobert had a seven point game you don't want to see that they had the 13 boards which was team high um, tonight, um, this was a no-show offensively. You can't have that happen in it. If you're Rudy Gobert, he was a 20-10 and 10 guy in preseason, was starting a season like that, has tailored off dramatically um, the last couple games. And then you look at Nas Reed. He had a solid play off the bench. He was had 22 minutes, 8 and 5 rebounds, hit a big three that kept him in the game. They bench came to play. But the starters just couldn't stay out of foul trouble, couldn't execute offensively or defensively consistently. And that was the Achilles heel of why they lost this game. Other than that, Quinn Wade basketball announced to sign out on the playground. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Tomorrow will be the rundown, my highly anticipated series that people have loved and praised the last season. It's still going to continue this year. I got more breakdowns coming this year and next year. Hope you guys enjoy y'all weekend. It just started this Friday. Oof, man, y'all got me tripping tonight. It is, it is a whole lot of videos and a whole lot of basketball I have to watch tonight. But I got it covered for y'all for that rundown tomorrow. Other than that, see y'all tomorrow. Quinn Wade Basketball Now sign out on the Playground on YouTube.